Good afternoon all the nerds out there. I hope you all are doing fine. And guess what? Today we are going to dive into the world of deconstruction. So as you can see over your screen, you can see we have the PowerPoint here and we'll immediately move to the first one, the introduction of deconstruction, right? So deconstruction is a kind of fancy term that might sound complicated for you, but it's really just about how we understand the meaning of words and text. So the first thing first, deconstruction is like a way of looking at text, like books, article, or even speeches and saying something like that. Hey, there is no one true meaning here. It's kind of like shaking off the idea that there's some perfect, unchangeable meaning behind everything we read. This whole deconstruction thing was brought into the spotlight by a clever guy named Jake Derrida in his book of Grammatology in 1967. He basically said, let's forget about the idea of perfect, unchanging meanings and get into the nitty gritty of how language actually works. Derrida was super into the idea that language is all about signs and words. Now take a note here. He suggests that they only make sense because they are different from each other. That's the word or sentence that you should remember about deconstruction. He says that signs and words and they only make sense because they are different from each others. Like we understand hot because we know it's not cold, right? So that's what he meant by difference or by contrast between signs. Now, deconstruction isn't just for literature geeks. It's inspired all sorts of cool studies in things like law, anthropology, history, and even psychology. Plus, it's been a big deal in art and architecture, showing up in everything from crazy buildings to funky music and literature. So how does this deconstruction thing work? Well, imagine reading a book twice. So basically Derrida suggests that the book you are reading today, right? And after some time, if you read it again, it will sound completely different. So remember this, right? The essence of deconstruction that the meaning isn't fixed. It can change over time. Deconstruction is all about ditching those neat and tidy ideas, this versus that, or right versus wrong. It's about looking at concepts and saying, hey, they're all kind of connected and none is more important than the others. So it's like breaking down those walls between ideas and seeing the connections so that's the deconstruction guys and it's all about realizing that meaning isn't set in stone and that words and ideas are more connected than we might think right so next time you read a book remember that it might mean something different when you read it later now let's talk about this german philosopher martin heidegger that you can see in your screen he is a kind of real brainiac in the world of philosophy so first thing first heidegger was a german philosopher and he did some serious deep thinking like he's up there with the big names when it comes to philosophy now why do we care about heidegger you're asking right well he's known for bringing some pretty fancy words ideas to the table like phenomenology which is something like trying to understand our conscious experiences. And then another word he brought that was hermeneutic, which was figuring out how we interpret stuff. And of course, he has this word also existentialism, which is kind of that whole, what's the meaning of life, that kind of thing. It represents the meaning of life. So if you ask why he's important in deconstruction, well, Heidegger's work gave birth to that word exactly. And thanks to his concept called decon destruction, not deconstruction, but destruction. And it's all about taking apart and examining things closely.
Heidegger had a lot to say about truth. He believed that the way we think about truth is because there's something deep down like a primal truth vibe going on. Now we'll talk about one of the important work of his Being and Time, which was published in 1927. So he came up with the cool term Dazeen, which basically means being there. He thought humans have this deep, non-abstract understanding that shapes how we live. He called it being in the world. It's kind of like saying we are not just thinking brains in a jar. We are kind of part of the world. So unlike René Descartes, who was all about I think, therefore I am, Heidegger took a different route and he said, let's figure out the meaning of being by looking at how humans live. So he's all about the human experience, shaping our understanding of existence. Now we'll talk about this German philosopher Edmund Husserl, right? And who rocked the world of philosophy with something called phenomenology. It's when this name comes in your exam or anywhere about Edmund Husserl, you should remember that he's famous for his phenomenology. So picture this. Hussle was this brainy guy, okay, who believed that understanding human consciousness was like no other field of study. He didn't think you could, you know, just gather lots of data and cook up some general theory, like in science, right? So no, studying consciousness was its own unique thing. Now let's break down this fancy word called phenomenology. So it's basically all about digging into that nitty gritty of how we experience and think about stuff. Imagine you're examining not just the things around you, but also how your mind works when you look at those things. That's phenomenology is in action, guys. So hustle was all about saying, hey, Let's not just see the world as object and things reacting to each other like in science. Let's dive into how we experience those objects and what's going on in our minds when we do it. So he was a bit of a rebel too. He challenged the idea of just collecting data and making general theories like you do in science. Instead, he believed in taking a close look at how we experience things, how our mind works and the structure of our thoughts so phenomenology isn't your run of the mill way of studying stuff right it's like looking at the world through the lens of our own consciousness it's about getting into the nitty-gritty of how our minds process and experience things it's like taking a mental journey into the heart of our thoughts and experience now let's immediately move to the Jake Derrida and of course his notable ideas that we'll discuss one by one. So the first thing first, you must be wondering who is Jake Derrida? Well, you know it and most of the literary geeks know about him. But anyway, he was a French philosopher with roots in Algeria. He's best known for, guess what, deconstruction. So what's the deconstruction, right? Well, that's what we have been discussing till now. Well, according to Derrida, deconstruction is something like when you take a magnifying glass to a text and zoom in real close. Derrida used this approach to analyze all sorts of stuff, like the language theory of Sassor and the deep thinking of Husserl and Heidegger. Derrida was very important in post-structuralism and postmodern philosophy. Basically, he was all about shaking up the way we think about things. And the guy was seriously prolific that he wrote more than 40 books and cranked of 100 of essays and talks. That's a whole lot of brain power, right? So let's talk about his terms one by one. You can see deconstruction. Well, as you know, we have been discussing about deconstruction from the beginning. So this term, it's like his superpower. Basically, it's a way of looking at text like books or writing and saying, hey, let's not take everything at face value. It's all about digging deeper 
questioning what words really mean and seeing how they can have multiple interpretation differences so this fancy word difference is all about the dance between words and their meanings the reader was obsessed with how words can both differ from and differ their meaning it's like words playing hard to get and always teasing us with different interpretation another term here you can see in fact this one phallogocentrism or gocentrism whatever anyway so it's a kind of tongue twister right but anyway if you can say it correctly it's absolutely perfect but anyway so this term is derrida's way of saying that we tend to favor the masculine perspective in language it's like saying that words and language often lean towards a more masculine way of thinking sidelining other perspective he tackled this idea in an essay called plato's pharmacy remember that so now other terms that we have discussed in our previous session which was all about post structuralism right so free play imagine what is that free play imagine a time when everyone thought humans were the center of the universe then along came an event that shook that belief derrida called this the free play moment it's when we realize that we are not the center of everything and that meanings can be like wild card constantly changing arc writing derrida was all about shaking up the traditional view that a speech is more important than writing he argued that a speech got all the love while writing played second fiddle so arc writing is his way of flipping the script and giving the writing its due the next term you can see is metaphysics of presence so this one's is a kind of big word and derrida was all about challenging the idea that we can have immediate access to meaning he said that throughout history philosopher were obsessed with presence and that led to a whole bunch of misunderstandings again kora that we have already discussed in post structuralism well this is a word plato used and derrida was all over it he used his deconstruction superpower to dig into what plato really meant with this term another term is trace so trace is like the bread crumb trail of meaning derrida used this idea to show how meanings are connected and leave their mark even when we can't see them directly another term that you can see ontology and ever heard of this ghost stuff right from the past coming back to haunt us that's what hauntology is all about derrida used this term to talk about how stuff from the past keeps popping up in our present like an old ghostly friend some of other terms are also here that i didn't put it because they are not important so now we'll just immediately move to our next which is writing and differences and of grammatology which is quite important and there you have to pay more attention okay so these important books are all by derrida so first up we have writing and differences published in 1967 so this book basically collects some of derrida's early lectures and essays that made him famous it's like a greatest hits album of his thought now let's talk about grammatology and which is another heavy wet from the same year so this one is quite super crucial for a thing called deconstruction so remember that deconstruction theory only came from of grammatology which is like analyzing how language and writing works so derrida says that in western philosophy people often thought of writing as less important than speaking and he is here to challenge that idea so what he did in of grammatology derrida talks about a bunch of other famous thinkers like claude levi strauss ferdinand de saussure jean jacques rousseau he basically takes their ideas about language and writing and turns them upside down he calls out something called phonocentrism which is the belief that a speech is 
more real and important than writing. Derrida points out the flaws and gaps in their thinking. Derrida's ideas were pretty different from other thinkers, especially like Jake Lacan and Claude Lévi-Strauss, as we know, who were into structuralism, right, that we have discussed in previous session that you can go and watch. But anyway, he wasn't a fan of their theories and wanted to shake things up again. And the cool thing is, of grammatology introduced a bunch of concepts that Derrida would use later in his work. It's all about linguistic writing and how we make meaning from words. And these terms that we have discussed in the beginning, they play important role in Derrida's literary criticism. But anyway, now this was all about this writing differences and especially of grammatology. So that was a special focus in this slide at this writing and differences is just you need to remember the name that's all. But anyway, let's move to our sixth slide, which is about the structure sign play in the discourse of the human science. 1966 basically so back in 1966 Derrida gave a talk at John Hopkins University and it later became a chapter in his book writing and differences so in this talk he tackled a big idea he noticed that philosophers have this habit of criticizing each other's writing style right basically what these uh, critic or these philosophers who had this habit of criticizing each other's, they were saying like, hey, your way of talking is messed up. But wait, but Derrida argued that we are kind of stuck with the language we have inherited. We can't just start from scratch. He also talked about Claude Lévi-Strauss, who had this theory that we have discussed previously about bricolage, right? So basically it means we are like handymen using whatever tools we have at our hand or disposal to create stuff. Derrida thought this idea wasn't just about fixing things. It applied to how we think and write too, right? So before we move again to the bricolage, you should remember that we had a special talk about structuralism, right? And in a simple word, it's a way of looking at language and culture by breaking them down into tiny parts. And Derrida thought this was cool, but said it hadn't gone far enough. He believed that these ideas were still hanging on a center, whether that the center was God, being presence, or even humanity. It's like a constant position we keep swapping out. So Derrida, again, also looked at the term bricolage, and he said it's not just about fixing things. It's also a metaphor for how we criticize things like books or ideas. We are all like handyman trying to make sense of stuff, but there is no master or engineer who creates from scratch. Everything we create, whether physical or intellectual, it's like a mix of different ideas and tool. Okay, guys, let's move quickly to our seventh slide, which is about Paul Deman and his blindness and insight. And we are also going to have a look on a couple of his terms course like allegories of reading the rhetoric of romanticism and the resistance theory one by one we'll move but first we need to talk about this Paul de Man, who was this literary guy from Belgium he was friend with Jake Derrida together they joined force into this intellectual movement called deconstruction it's all about questioning the way we understand things in 1966 de Man went to a conference where Derrida gave a famous talk about language and structure. That's when they became best friends. So the man was all about the ideas of Heidegger that we discussed in the beginning. He wrote this cool book called Blindness and Insight in 1960. It's a bunch of essays where he tried to move past just looking at the surface of literature. He wanted to dig deep into what makes stories interesting. So the man also wrote Allegories of Reading in 1979, where he explored how language plays tricks in the works of Rousseau, Nietzsche, Rilke, and Proust. He thought about how these authors use words in tricky ways. In Criticism and Crisis, he said that literature is all about fiction, not facts. It's like a game where words 
don't mean just one thing but he noticed that some people resist this idea and want to find clear meaning in literature when he looked at romanticism he questioned the idea that symbols are better than allegories or that metaphors are better than metonymy lastly in the resistance theory he talked about how we can use science to understand literature better he used the example of grammar rhetoric and logic to show how language and theory can help us to understand books so paul the man was a brainy guy who liked to dive deep into the world of words and literature he asked lots of question and made us rethink how we understand the stories and now we'll move immediately to the joseph hellas miller and his essay what the critic as host so here we are talking about j h miller he was an american literary expert who was really into something called again literary deconstruction and imagine he was like a detective for books trying to figure out how words and stories work he was part of this cool group called the yale school along with some other brainy folks like paul demand jake derrida and geoffrey hartman they were all in deconstruction so miller hung out at a place like john hopkins university and yale university where he shared his ideas with other scholars now for him deconstruction was all about saying words and stories are like one big puzzle So Miller used this idea to analyze all sorts of American and British writings like novels and poems. He believed that there is more to a text than what's on the surface. It's like peeling an onion to find different layers of meaning. So Miller once wrote a response to another scholar named M H Abraham. Quite important. That's why he wrote the critic as host. so that mh abraham who wasn't a big fan of deconstruction remember that so he called it the critic as host in it miller defended what deconstruction saying that words and stories aren't a prison but a playground where critics can explore all kinds of meaning he also talked about this idea of the triumph theory in 1986 it was all about how theory like deconstruction could help us understand literature better so to sum it up j h miller was like a literary detective and who believed that words and stories have hidden meanings and he used deconstruction to unravel them and he loved having these deep conversation about books and what they really mean so guys we are at the end of this session and as you can see our last slide is all about the yale school let's chat about something called the yale school now it's not like a real school if you're thinking with classrooms and textbooks it's just a cool name for a bunch of super smart people who love thinking and talking about literature they like the literary detectives of the world so picture this you're at yale university and there's this group brainiac hanging out there they are into some deep stuff especially a way of thinking called deconstruction which is like the taking part a story to see how it works and guess what this deconstruction thing was hugely popular in their gangs now let's meet our crew who were in the yale school you have got susana felman paul deman jaffrey hartman jh miller and and the legendary harold bloom these folks are like the avengers of literary world they have read more books than you can imagine and can talk about literature for hours so What's really cool is that they're all influenced by Jake Derrida. Right, the guy who's behind the whole deconstruction thing. It's all about digging into texts and finding hidden meanings and contradiction. Like a literary treasure hunt. So guys, that's all about our deconstruction and tomorrow we'll talk about new criticism. And in couple of session we'll be able to finish this literary criticism unit. right so thank you so much and have a good day